Hello everyone, this is Senrex from the Order 66 Hellions, and today I'm going to be doing my fourth Rosh review on Jasmine from my home guild of the Order 66 Hellions. Let's get right into it. First, we're going to go over the itinerary today. Um, we're going to talk about the account. We're going to do an overview of the account, talk about some strengths and weaknesses, go over the Grand Arena Championship performance of this account, talk about farming, what's missing, and how this answer may shock you. Uh, fifth, we're going to go over the mods and datacrons. And then six, we're going to talk about moving forward, what I would do with this account. As you can see, this account has three Galactic Legends, and it performs very well in Fleet, as well as is in the Kyber League. So for this account's GP, its performance is very, very, very good, as well as the fact that it is really not all that old of an account. All right, so let's talk about the account. So first and foremost, it's 6.9 mil GP with three Galactic Legends, Jedi Master Luke, Supreme Leader Kylo Ren, and Rey as well as Executor and Profundity. I have no idea what the account's farming as it appears to be equidistant from about three to four Galactic Legends. It is in Kyber 4, around 30, th sorry, 3,060 Grand Arena points at the time of this video is being recorded. Um, the owner of this account, she always runs the Territory War bot, so I really enjoy that because I am a huge fan of Territory War and the fact that Jasmine always runs the damn Territory Robot is much appreciated because every time I go in and look at the look at the bot commands to size up myself up against our opponent in Territory War, it's already been done for me, and I'm just super grateful for that. Grateful for that. On top of that, the account has a very, very, very solid mods. So let's talk about some strengths and weaknesses. Obviously, modding is a strength. They got a 4.26 mod score, which is very high for this range of GP, as well as this young of an account. Their fleet arena is score is very good. They're a consistent top tier placer. And I've said this twice already, but this account is newer. It is, I believe, under three years old. Star Wars Galaxy Furious.gg has it started in October of 2021. So for how new this account is, it is very, very good. But there are some problems that come along with being a, an advanced account like this that is fairly new. GAC, it is a 3060, Kyber 4, which is nothing to scoff at for a 6.9 mil GP player. According to my best estimates, um, this account is lower than 95% of the people in Kyber 4. Additionally, this account has lots of Rise the Empire characters, proving that the player that owns this account is a team player. And this account has amazing farm completion, meaning just about every single farm that this person has started, they have finished all the way to completion. Weaknesses would be a lack of Datacron depth, not many high-level Datacrons, specifically in this new light side focused Datacron set, which I believe would really benefit this account. Second, Galactic Legends. They've got three Galactic Legends. None of them are the are none of their Galactic Legends are what I believe are in the best three Galactic Legends. That being Jedi Master Kenobi, Lord Vader, and Jabba the Hutt. So we can work on this. And lastly, Inquisitors. This account has no relic Inquisitors for the Reva mission, which if you have watched a Rex video ever before, you know that I love, love, love the Inquisitors, and you need to get them geared up ASAP. Let's go over GAC. So there's a little bit of a, a stagnant score going stagnant score going on here. The account fluctuates between 3,000 and 3,100, as well as the account clearly does not enjoy 3v3s as much as 5v5s, as there is a correlation between uh, lower the, the account tends to participate lower in 3v3 Grand Arena game modes. Um, how do they fix this? First of all, I'd recommend setting a heavier defense to put the burden of the mistakes on your opponent. A lot of these a lot of this account's 3v3 Grand Arena matchups look like they go into the 2000s of banners, which is very, very high. If this account was putting everything on defense, they could probably hold their opponent to under 1,000 banners pretty easily and make it easier for them to make up that time or make up that deficit on offense as they would need to clear far less squads. Um, this is a really solid strategy as for low-level players, you really want to put the burden of performing successful counters on your opponent as they have a lot more roster to work with. So they can afford to be less careful and meticulous, meaning that they're more likely to make mistakes. So if you're the lower level roster, you always wanna be putting your best foot forward on defense, as this is gonna force your opponent who has much better characters uh, and a lot more characters to be on their toes and counter you more proficiently if they wanna win. And if they lose a couple battles, it's likely that they're going to either A, quit, because they are frustrated or B, go into a death spiral of losing battles over and over again. Lastly, I would recommend attacking later in GAC. I feel like psychologically this gives you a really good advantage against your opponent 
that allows you to win more grand arenas. Additionally, try to care more about 3v3. I know 3v3 sucks, but sometimes just participating can help you win a lot more efficiently. Let's farming. So let's talk about farming and what's missing. So this account has a really, really, really unique thing that I've highlighted here in this image. So basically their characters go from gear 13 to gear 8, I believe, in about three rows. They have very, very, very few gear 12 characters, and the characters they do have to gear 12 appear just to be their Ewoks for the C-3PO mission. It's important to note that this account has no glaring holes in characters, Omicrons, or incomplete teams, meaning that this account has no incomplete teams, no missing necessary Omicrons, and no characters um, that you would like have ideally in a lineup. So for example, like you know, they have Starkiller, but they also have Juhani. So a lot of people have Starkiller, don't have Juhani, don't have that Juhani Omicron, so that I'd consider a hole in their roster. This account has completed just about every single farm that they've started, except for, I think, the General Grievous team, which they only have General Grievous to gear 13, and everything else is like gear one. The only thing this account is missing is Zetas and entire teams. Zetas, because as previously discussed, this is a newer account, which means that they have not had enough time to accrue the Zetas like the rest of us. They are gearing their characters up quicker than they are obtaining Zetas to apply on those characters, which leads to a huge deficit in characters lacking Zetas. As you can see on this page, a lot of long, long term, or a lot longer term players would have the Zetas on General Grievous as well as Candorus and Mace Windu. You know, this account simply lacks those Zetas as well as entire teams, meaning that um, if this account is missing a team or character, they're, they have, they're missing the entire thing. They don't have, you know, any pieces of any teams together. It seems like they've just farmed every team to completion, and that is where they stop. Let's talk about mods and datacrons and mods. They have an amazing mod score. What I believe is happening on this account is much like my own account, is that the owner is taking characters to gear 13 more efficiently than they are modding them. So in this case, I'd recommend, just like myself, a little bit of increased vigilance on the modding end. For example, they have a Relic 4 Captain Rex who is a brand new character, amazing, but his mods are very, very, very lackluster. Now this is a problem that a lot of people in the game are having now as it appears that it's easier to take characters up to gear 13 and relic them than it is to get a good set of mods on them. And since our modding standards have increased so drastically back in the day, these mods probably would have been okay to have on a character like Captain Rex. But now with the slicing materials and the 6A mods, there's a lot higher standard of what level mods you should have on characters, so I think that a lot of accounts are just falling short of the standards that people have arbitrarily set for themselves um, because of um, because of just inability to farm these mods quick enough. Datacrons, they've got relatively low Datacron depth. It's important to note that on the Steadfast Resolve Datacron set, they don't have that many Datacrons at all. Even though their roster is extremely, extremely, extremely light side focused, if I was in this person's shoes, I would certainly recommend investing heavily in light side datacrons that would greatly benefit the roster and the steadfast resolve datacron set is exclusive to light side characters. So let's talk about the direction moving forward in this account. First and foremost, I have two screenshots here that show all of the Rise of the Empire niche characters that they have up to Relic. They've got Rose Tico up higher than she needs to be, Illuminar and Dooley to Relic 7, Hoth Rebel Soldier to Relic 7, First Order SEF TIE Pilot to Relic 7, Dengar to Relic 7, Aura Singh to Relic 7, Quill to Relic 6, Vandor Chewbacca to Relic 8. A lot of characters like this that are just super, super, super niche and really only used for Rise of the Empire characters. So if I was in the shoes of the person on this account, I would certainly um, recommend not, I would certainly recommend pausing um, relicking these Rise of the Empire characters as they have a lot of characters, they have almost as many characters up to Relic that are useful as characters that are up to Relic 7 just for Rise of the Empire operations, which is very interesting. So if I was in this person's shoes, I would certainly not be volunteering to Relic any more Rise of the Empire operations. You have clearly done your fair share. Moving forward, if I were you, what would I do? Um, first and foremost, Inquisitors. I'm always going to say Inquisitors if you don't have them. Huge, huge, huge investment. Next, I'd go two, three, and four all go together. I'd recommend General Grievous and Friends, and as well as Wat Tambor, so that you can get your General Anakin Skywalker. Wat Tambor is not necessary, but you have him at level one, and if you take him to Relic or just put a Zeta on him, he's going to be extremely helpful in boosting the overall power of your roster. In certain niche scenarios, Wat Tambor can make an ineffective counter totally work, 
as well as the fact that he really, really, really boosts characters like Supreme Leader Kylo Ren, Sith Eternal Emperor, as well as Jedi Master Luke in 3v3 Grand Arenas. Um, General Anakin Skywalker, since your roster is so light side heavy, I would strongly, strongly, strongly recommend getting General Grievous and his friends up to Relic and then working on General Anakin Skywalker because since your roster is so light side dependent, there's a million teams that you could slot gas into where he would be effective. Lastly, once you finish those, I'd recommend going for Leia or JNK. Me personally, I think you should target Jedi Master, or sorry, Leia, because she is, or sorry, the this account is very close to to Jedi or to Galactic Legend Leia, and that's going to be an extremely useful character in the new raids, as well as something nice to have sooner than everyone else, because people won't know fully how to respond to this character. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, I'm doing free roster views, so comment your Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes .gg in the description below, and I will get to you ASAP to do a roster review. I've got four more of these that are going to be recorded in the next few days. Lastly, a guild, little guild plug. If you're tired of not getting all the Reva shards, join my guild, the Order 66 Hellions. Discord link in the description below. Thank you guys so much for watching, and have a great day.